This lovely manhwa is titled, Let Me Kidnap the Male Lead. If you love stories like this, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll never miss the next episode. At the beginning of the story, we see a man looking exhausted, and as he walked through the empty streets, all he wanted was to hurry home and lie down. He wondered why he was the only one who had to stay and work so late. It was dangerous to walk alone at night these days, with all the kidnappings. Whoosh! The wind danced in the air. He shook off his fear, telling himself he would be fine. After all, his face was the only thing he had going for him. He tried to console himself, reminding himself that he was a strong, able-bodied young man and that nothing was going to happen to him. If anyone tried anything, he would just dart. He turned around immediately, wondering what that sound was. Dash. There it was again. He didn't see anyone and began to wonder if it was just his imagination. Swoosh. The next time he opened his eyes, he was in an entirely different location. He found himself in a well-furnished room, sitting up in fright. He was confused, wondering where on earth he was. He got up from the ground, walking around and looking, recalling that he had been in the street just a moment ago. Was this the work of magic? Finally reaching the door, he grabbed the doorknob. Rattle. He banged on the door, asking if anyone was there in a panic, but there was no answer. Realization hit him, and he stopped banging on the door, his face turning pale. He might have been kidnapped. So, the kidnappings were real after all. Ha! Huh. So, when you spoke about it on the road, you didn't actually believe it. Well, I guess you do now. Unleashing the raging chihuahua within, he stuttered, declaring they would regret kidnapping him. He yelled, demanding they show themselves and asking what exactly they wanted from him since he had nothing to offer. Before he could finish his sentence, he was suddenly naked, fully immersed in a fragrant bath. He continued yelling, that's worth. Then he was fully dressed, sitting at a dining table, holding cutlery with a full course meal in front of him. Finishing his sentence, that's worth taking. He ended up in a cozy bed, dressed in pajamas. One month later, he had fully embraced the lifestyle, happily declaring he didn't want to go home again. Tossing and turning in the cozy bed, he wished he could stay there forever. Let's see if the feeling is going to last. Swoosh! Ha! Huh, he exclaimed. He was now lying on the bare floor, with just a blanket over him, all alone. He got up immediately in shock, glancing around and realized where he was. He knelt down and wept, yelling, No! Please kidnap me again, he exclaimed, angry at how they could pamper him only to dump him back on the street. Meanwhile, the person watching him sighed, saying he was her 29th failure in a row. She had to find the male lead of the world. Otherwise, the world was going to end. She looked worried. Could she be the famous kidnapper? She slumped in sadness, noting that he should have shown up by now. Smiling crazily, she wondered if this meant she would have to kidnap another guy again. She paused for a moment and then raged in fury, questioning why there were so many handsome men in the novel. That screaming madwoman was indeed the kidnapper. She had been reincarnated as a character in the novel. But how does she know she was reincarnated? The carriage that the female lead could never dodge was approaching. Romance fantasy carriage. Go. Row fan carriage. Smack. The carriage hit her. After being hit by the carriage, she recalled the memories of her past life. And that's how every romance fantasy goes. She didn't want to be asked why. The world she was living in was inside a romance fantasy novel that her friend wrote. The character she reincarnated as was an extra who kidnaps the male lead. She was furious, wondering why she couldn't just be reborn as the main character or the final villain. Instead, she reincarnated as an extra who kidnaps the male lead. Sad. Kneeling, she questioned why her friend would do this to her. To make matters worse, the character she reincarnated as would eventually be killed by the male lead. Arg! she exclaimed. She tried running away to avoid being killed off by the original plot. She recalled her past attempts to escape, giving off a lone cowboy vibe, even wearing a hat, saying she didn't want to die and was leaving, telling everyone not to look for her. But every time, she was stopped. However, if she didn't kidnap the male lead, she was told she would die anyway. Ugh, she exclaimed. The devil would destroy the world.
The male lead and the female lead had to work together to defeat the final boss, the devil, and the two leads only met because she kidnapped the male lead. So, she decided to kidnap the male lead to save the world, but she didn't know what he looked like. Gah, she wailed, wondering how she was supposed to know what he looked like when the only word used to describe him was handsome? She wanted some keywords, at least, like hashtag innocent, hashtag younger man, hashtag sundra, hashtag black hair, hashtag sleazy, hashtag calculating, or hashtag cranky. She huffed, knowing she had no choice but to kidnap every single handsome man out there. She smiled and snickered evilly, stating that she would find him in no time. Screaming and slamming her hands on the table, she questioned when exactly she would find him. It had already been a year and a half. Burst. Lady Vivian, is something wrong? Ren asked in a panic. Previously, Ren had been Vivian's first kidnapping victim. Currently, Ren was Vivian's one and only subordinate. Vivian spoke sadly, telling Ren that the world was going to end soon because of all these damn handsome men. Ha 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 ha. Why is that statement she made so funny? Ren replied to her, suggesting that the latest victim wasn't the right one either. Vivian nodded, calling him handsome man number one. She wondered aloud if she should narrow her search to men who were at least as handsome as Ren. Ren tilted his head, smiling at her. He handed her the newspaper he was holding and asked if she remembered handsome man number seven. Vivian nodded, recalling that he was the one who had studied for his bar exam the entire month he was held captive. Ren nodded and informed her that there was an article about him in the newspaper. Vivian paused for a moment and asked if he had left a review too. A review of what? Your kidnapping skills? Or your kidnapping accommodations? Ren cleared his throat and said, sort of. He opened the newspaper and went to the right page. Vivian fumed, asking why the victims always went around telling people about getting kidnapped. She complained that this was why the streets weren't filled with handsome men anymore. Calming down, she mentioned that they had released him a long time ago and wondered why he was in the newspaper now. Ren smiled, still holding the paper up to her, and told her she would understand once she read the article. Vivian finally took the newspaper and read. Victim number seven wrote that he had given up on studying law due to his family circumstances. However, he had resumed his studies during his captivity and, a few months after being released, had become the first commoner to be admitted to the Academy's law department with a full scholarship. What? Vivian was utterly confused. Victim number seven gave all the credit to his kidnapper, stating that he too wished to become as generous as them and hoped to repay their kindness one day. What the heck did I just read? Oh my days, my heart. I'm dying of laughter here. Vivian smiled heartily and exclaimed, That's amazing. She was pleased that he got into the academy. Rin smiled and said it was all thanks to her. Oh, is it? He <laughs> he, she replied. But then the mood shifted. She lamented that the world was about to end because of her. So what was the point? Ha, screw my life, she muttered. Beep, beep. Rin called out to her, but there was no response. She was dwelling on her failures. He called again telling her there was a handsome man on 3 to 23 Hilda Street. She sighed, saying it was probably just another handsome extra, but her eyes widened. She looked away quickly as the light blinded her and questioned where all that light was coming from. As the light dimmed slightly, she was able to see and asked, who is that ridiculously handsome man? She remarked that he was easily one of the top three most handsome men she had ever seen. Holding her head, mouth agape, she complimented how well he was drawn, stating that one could tell the artist had put in extra effort to depict him. She stood up from her chair with an evil-looking smile, saying that something told her today was going to be different. Ren, who was used to her usual crazy behavior, had already fetched her cloak for her. After putting on her cloak, Vivian thought to herself that the man had black hair and black eyes, noting that there was a villain who looked like that. Hmm... She dismissed the thought, convinced he wasn't a villain. Pressing the cliché button, she bid Rin goodbye, telling him she would see him later. She assured herself that today, she would carry out her final kidnapping, this time for sure. Meanwhile, on the streets, his companion urged him to hurry, 
reminding him that it was nearly time for his meeting with the high-ranking noble. The companion was flustered as the background flowers kept getting in his way. Quiet, he said. The companion begged him, insisting that the kidnapper would have to be crazy to kidnap a magic swordsman like him. Who in the world wouldn't recognize a magic swordsman like him these days? Whoosh, he turned. The companion pleaded that they should head back to the estate now. Swoosh. He disappeared. The companion finally noticed and called out for him in shock. He has been kidnapped, the companion screamed. Vivian burst through the doors, proudly announcing that another handsome man had been successfully kidnapped. She reintroduced herself, declaring that she had been kidnapping handsome men for a year and a half now for various reasons. At first, she wasn't sure how to go about kidnapping grown men, knowing there was little she could do with her weak arms. She smacked a lamppost, and it bent immediately. Oops, she exclaimed. Did she just call those arms weak arms? But to her surprise, she had reincarnation plot armor that gave her incredible strength and speed. She began flexing her muscles. Huh? Thanks to this armor, kidnapping her victims was a breeze as always. It only took her five minutes. Vivian finally collapsed to the floor. She could only use her strength and speed for five minutes at a time. The heck? What sort of power is that? Only five freaking minutes. Anyway, that was how she completed her final kidnapping, this time for sure. Vivian struggled to get to her monitoring chair, tired and staggering. She noted that Ren was running an errand and would probably be back late. Taking a seat, she prepared to see if she had caught the male lead. Glance, glance, glance. She observed him closely. After some time, Vivian looked puzzled. He was freakishly handsome, giving off a main character aura. Black hair, black eyes, just like the typical male lead in a dark story. Calix von Agrian, the male lead. She noted that the male lead's name suited him perfectly. Vivian was elated, her eyes sparkled, and her heart raced. She thought that if he could use shadow magic, the power said to be unique to the male lead, her exhausting kidnapping spree would finally end. Vivian watched as he approached the door. He stopped in front of it, pausing for a moment before unleashing something. She watched with anticipation and eagerness, already congratulating herself. She noticed he was preparing for something and wondered if he could already use shadow magic. What happened next completely threw her off. He formed a dark sword. Vivian's shoulders dropped in disappointment when she realized it wasn't shadow magic. It was a sword made of mana. Done. 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 She stuttered, questioning whether he was a magic swordsman. Swoosh. Wham. Crash. He sliced through the door, and Vivian fell to the ground, screaming in fear. Crap, she exclaimed. Chills ran through her as she pieced everything together. A magic swordsman with black hair and black eyes? She finally realized he was the villain, Dietrich. Who is Dietrich, you ask? He is the ultimate villain who killed his own parents without hesitation. He is also the female lead's older brother and the main cause of her misery. Vivian lay helpless on the table, knowing she was in deep trouble. She trembled, stuttering, and muttering that all she ever wanted was to find the male lead. And yet, she peeked at the monitor, wondering if she should just throw him back out on the street. Well, duh, or do you have a better plan? On second thought, she smiled, realizing she would die the moment he caught her. Game over. She grabbed a picture frame, saying there was only one thing left to do. She snatched her suitcase, planning to make a run for it. She intended to run away and lay low for about a month. Crack. The door to her room broke. Dietrich smiled manically, exclaiming, There you are. Even I am scared, man. Vivian screamed. He stepped toward her and she fell to the ground in fear. Dietrich pointed the sword at her and asked if she was the one who had kidnapped him. Damn it, she cursed inwardly in fear. She immediately raised her hands, apologizing and admitting she was the kidnapper. Dietrich sighed, deep in thought, not expecting the kidnapper to be a woman. She cursed at him when she saw him sitting in her chair. He asked if she knew who he was when she kidnapped him. She replied, saying she didn't know, she had just seen his face and rushed to kidnap him, having no idea who he was. His mouth twitched into an evil smirk. Huh, is that so? 
He brushed his hair back and told her he didn't blame her. One couldn't see a good-looking face like his every day. He said he knew she would try to kidnap him. Vivian quivered, still apologizing. With a smug smile, Dietrich asked how many handsome men she had kidnapped in total. Ah, I can assure you, he won't be happy with the answer. Vivian wondered what he had just said, lowering her hands and thinking deeply. She finally answered, saying 34, including him. Dietrich refused, saying he thought only 31 men had been kidnapped so far and asked what she meant by 34. Oh, uh, she thought he sure had a lot of questions. Noticing something was off, she asked if he was always such a talkative person. She had thought he was a serious character who lopped off people's heads with a straight face. But right then, he looked oddly excited. She wondered if he still had some humanity left in him since he hadn't killed his parents yet. Now, Lady Vivian, he spoke. She answered, then gasped, trying to refute the name as hers. He smiled, telling her his memory was as flawless as his appearance, so he never forgot the names and faces of the nobles he had met. No way. Vivian was really shocked. He retorted, questioning whether she had just doubted his memory. Lady Vivian Schmidt, he called. She went silent, and he decided to take her silence as a yes. He said, who knew that the infamous serial kidnapper of handsome men was the lady of House Schmidt? He told her he was going to ask his final question. Vivian pleaded in her mind that he shouldn't ask her how she wanted to die. He asked her, if you were to rank all the men you've kidnapped so far, what would you rank me? Pardon? Vivian was dumbfounded. Dietrich told her to tell him how handsome he was. Sigh. I can see that someone was really deluded. Gosh. Vivian knew just what to do. She rubbed her hands together, smiling religiously, and told him he was obviously number one, and that it wasn't even up for debate. He became angered, glaring at her, and said he wasn't a fan of brown nosing or fake compliments. He turned his face away. Vivian realized he was going to be hard to please. She recomposed herself, acting coy, and said she wasn't lying when she said he was number one. He sprang up, looming over her, and asked how dare she keep lying to him. Wait, wait. Vivian yelled, asking him to let her finish. She told him he was number one, but not the only one. There were two other men tied with him. He waved his sword, saying that was even less believable. What on earth do you want, honestly? He repeated her words, trying to understand what she was telling him, that there were two other men in the world as handsome as him. Ridiculous, he exclaimed. He swung his sword, saying she needed to work on her lying. Boom. Crash. The place was now filled with dust, making it hard for anyone to see. The next second, Ren held her. Run, she looked up at him. He held a sword in front of them. Vivian noticed that she had never seen Ren so angry before. He almost seemed like a different person. She brushed the thought aside, reasoning that it wasn't important. She warned him not to get angry now, or else the crazy man in front of them might kill them both. She wondered if she was really going to die like this. Opening her eyes to peek, she saw Dietrich hanging his sword on his neck, laughing and saying, So, this is one of the three men you spoke about. An annoyed Ren told him not to talk to Lady Vivian like that. Vivian quickly clapped her hand over his mouth and answered Dietrich, confirming that Ren was indeed one of them. She added that Ren was handsome, wasn't he? Dietrich remained quiet for a moment, then raised his sword. Vivian shut her eyes, bracing herself and hoping that if he was going to kill her, he would make it quick. Instead, Dietrich dispelled the sword. She opened her eyes, confused about what was happening. Dietrich clapped and smiled at her, complimenting her for having good taste. What is actually going on here? These people are tripping seriously. Huh! Vivian exclaimed, trying to understand his reaction. He acknowledged that he could see she wasn't lying. He then said that, of course, he was slightly better looking, but Ren was undeniably good looking too. Ren, who was witnessing all this, reluctantly stayed quiet because Vivian had told him to. Vivian smiled happily, noticing that Dietrich didn't seem mad. She stated that as long as Ren remained quiet, they might survive this encounter. She glanced at Ren and saw that his face was becoming more menacing. She pleaded with him to stay calm and not grind his teeth. 
Vivian then asked Dietrich if he could spare them since she had told him the truth. Dietrich stayed quiet for a moment, thinking. Then he laughed, saying that he wasn't going to kill her in the first place. What? She exclaimed, reminding him that he had lifted his sword. He told her he was just messing with her because her reactions were amusing. He remarked that she seemed rather naive for a criminal who had made the front page of a newspaper. He laughed. You jerk! Vivian shouted, removing the sign she wore, I am the kidnapper, and making an attempt to throw it at him. But he turned quickly, and she hit it. He smiled at her and said that since his business there was done, he would be on his way. Really? She asked hopefully, inquiring if he knew the way out and even offering to show him. He replied that he knew the way out, but most importantly, he coughed. Now what? Stop rambling and leave. Vivian thought inwardly. Dietrich told her that he would like her to call him by his name the next time they met. She accepted enthusiastically, all while thinking she would never bring him there again. He finally turned and left. Ha! Huh. Vivian let out a sigh of relief. He's finally gone, she said, slumping to the ground. Ren held her, asking what on earth had happened. He stated that he was glad she didn't seem to be hurt at least. She told him she really thought she would kick the bucket. She explained that the man who had just left was Dietrich Bielbetis, adding that his name alone summarized his dark past. When he walked through the door, she thought the Grim Reaper was there for her. She breathed a sigh of relief, thankful he hadn't killed her, although he had wrecked their secret hideout. Bryn flinched, recalling that Dietrich had indeed wrecked their secret hideout. Vivian boasted that if she hadn't used her power earlier, she would have taken him down in the blink of an eye. What a shame, she lamented. He was now behind her. He called out to her, causing her to shake in fear. He mentioned that he had just remembered destroying the room. On that note, he asked if there was another room available. Vivian stuttered, asking what he meant. He said he thought she kept her victims locked up for a month. Yes, but... She replied, confused. He glared at her, saying he couldn't be the only exception. Could he? Vivian smacked her forehead, questioning why her ominous hunches were always spot on. After a few days, Vivian looked disheveled, slumped in her chair, wondering how long Dietrich had been her kidnap fee, hoping it would soon reach a month. Run refused, saying he had only been there for four days. Arg! Vivian exclaimed, asking when the hell he was going to leave. Flashback to when Dietrich allowed Vivian to kidnap him. Cries. I don't know who is crazier, Dietrich or Vivian. They sick bro. Sitting at the dining table, happy with what Ren had served her, she thanked him and got ready to dive in. Dietrich grabbed her food and took a bite, complimenting Ren on his decent cooking skills. He always stole her food when she was about to eat. When she scoured the monitor, finally spotting the next handsome man, she told Ren they should go and kidnap him. Dietrich appeared suggesting she let him go because he wasn't that good-looking, noting that finding someone as handsome as he was would be difficult. Vivian screamed in shock. He always gave her unsolicited advice when she was looking for handsome men to kidnap. When she was about to sleep, he would appear above her and ask her how handsome he was. She begged him to let her sleep, murmuring for him to get out of her room. He kept popping up and asking her random questions. She wondered who wouldn't go crazy with someone like that around. Vivian couldn't wait for the month to be over. She scoffed, recalling that Dietrich was actually better than Melfus. She thought she preferred a man who would at least leave when his time was up rather than one who kept disguising himself just to be kidnapped. Beep, beep, beep. Rin smiled and told her that a handsome man had arrived. She jumped up immediately, asking Rin how the man looked. Rin told her he had silver hair and blue eyes and was about the same height as him. Vivian paused, thinking that he seemed too perfect and something wasn't right. She asked Rin when the last time was that they kidnapped Melfus. Rin thought for a moment, confirming that she was indeed talking about Melfus. He then remarked that it was about time Melfus showed up, noting that the last time they kidnapped him was two months ago. Vivian said she knew something was off and wondered if the new man could be Melfus. Rin laughed it off, telling her not to worry and that he doubted it. Vivian hoped it wasn't Melfus again, knowing that at any other time, it wouldn't matter, but right now she had her hands full with Dietrich. She glanced over at Dietrich, who was religiously sipping his tea. 
Vivian stood up and turned, deciding that now is not the time for that. They had to hurry before the target got away. She wanted to get it over with. Just as she was about to leave, Dietrich appeared behind her, asking if another handsome man had shown up. Vivian jumped back in shock, looking at him and noting that he had been drinking tea just a moment ago. Yeah, no question here. Dietrich has passed the scale of how crazy someone can be. I bow down. He smiled and told her that if she was on her way to kidnap the next victim, he would gladly follow her. She argued, reminding him that he said he would stay locked up there, so why did he want to follow her now? He glared at her, suggesting that she could let him out and still lock him up again. Couldn't she? She protested, saying that wasn't how it worked, shaking him continuously and asking him why he didn't just go home. He immediately refused, saying it wouldn't do. Vivian told him she couldn't entertain him today, so he just had to stay in his room and behave himself. No, he said defiantly. Vivian fumed, still shaking him and demanding to know what he meant by no, telling him she needed a yes. Damn it. She couldn't even budge him. Ren, who watched from behind, began getting furious. Dietrich noticed Ren's expression and smirked. Vivian looked up at Dietrich, wondering why he was smirking right now. The next minute, as if getting what he wanted, Dietrich told her he would wait there for her, turning to leave with a smile. Vivian was confused. Lady Vivian, Ren called. She turned back to him and smiled, and he smiled back. She said she was glad Dietrich gave up so quickly. Ren smiled and agreed, complimenting her persuasion skills as top-notch. What a relief, she smiled, feeling relieved and enjoying her handsome face therapy. She didn't want to think about Melfus. All she wanted was to go out and kidnap a handsome man. Meanwhile, in the palace, a guard informed her highness that the preparations were complete. He revealed an orb that showed the handsome man Vivian was about to kidnap. Oh no. The guard reported that six of the best guards in the empire were following the man they predicted would be the next target. Her highness looked fiercely at the orb, stating that they would finally catch that serial kidnapper. Vivian was already in position, ready to move in. Suddenly, Rin called out to her, telling her to wait. He pointed out that there were six people stationed near the target and they looked like investigators. Vivian paused. Investigators? She asked. She took a glance and observed them, seeing that they were indeed watching her target closely. How weird, she exclaimed. She wondered if those investigators were working with the man to trap her, but she didn't think so. She guessed they seemed to be keeping an eye on him, because he was a handsome man. She considered giving up this time. But then, sparkle. The target glowed beautifully. She couldn't resist such a face. She decided to go for it. What? Lady Vivian, wait. Ren exclaimed. But she had already leaped down, declaring that it was time for the kidnapping to commence. A quick look at how Vivian kidnaps her victims. Step 1. Swoosh. She pulls a bag over their head from behind. Step 2. She picks them up. Step 3. She runs away. Note, if you can do all of that in 0.3 seconds, you too are a professional kidnapper. Ha 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 ha. Before the guards could even react, the man was gone in the blink of an eye. They stood there with their mouths wide open in shock, staring at the spot where the man had stood. Her Highness watched through the orb as the guards panicked, wondering what they would tell her. She looked at the orb in anger, declaring that they had failed again. The guard in front of her clasped his hands and bowed his head, apologizing to her. She slid her hand on the table, telling him not to mind that and asking if he knew the victim's identity. The guard informed her that he was a foreigner whose identity was unknown. Her Highness stood up and turned to leave, saying it was a relief and that they should cover up the case then. The guard was confused and exclaimed, Pardon? She turned back in anger, asking if he had forgotten that the nobles meeting was coming up. She pointed out that announcing the fact that they let the kidnapper get away right under their noses wouldn't be a smart move, would it? She questioned. He immediately agreed, asking her for forgiveness. She clenched her fists, saying they would have to come up with another plan. She knew that solving the case was her last chance to redeem herself. She had to catch the kidnapper by any means necessary, restore her reputation, and become the empress no matter what. Back at their hideout, Ren waited for Vivian with a congratulatory orange juice. 
He praised her for a job well done and explained the reason for the juice. Vivian thanked him with a smile and gulped down the juice, saying it hit the spot. Run was glad he had prepared the drink for her. He grabbed the cup from her, suggesting that since she handled the kidnapping, she should get some rest. He offered to take over from there. Vivian insisted that it was okay, saying the juice gave her energy. She turned around, declaring that she had to get as much work done as possible while Dietrich wasn't causing trouble. She said she could check on the target herself. She wanted to see what everyone was doing. Staring at the monitor, she exclaimed, Huts! She wondered why only Dietrich's room was glowing and what was with the thirst trap scene. She noted that he looked super intelligent with glasses on. She guessed glasses were invented for moments like this. Switching to handsome man judging mode, she awarded him a bonus point of 10 and a face score of 10. She was surprised that he actually kept his promise and stayed in his room quietly. Ooh gosh, this girl is a full-blown clown. To be very honest, she glanced, recalling that he would be leaving soon, so it didn't matter. Turning to see what the new guy was doing, Vivian halted. Seeing the screen, the new guy waved his hands while holding up a board that said he was there to see Vivian, with a heart drawn at the end. Could it be Melphis? She questioned endlessly as her anger began to rise. Standing up, she declared that she was going to kill him. Where are they getting all these people from? Seriously, cries in tiredness. Vivian dashed to the room, bursting through the door and calling out his name aggressively, shouting that she was about to kill him. She demanded to know how many times she would have to tell him. The new guy was startled. Seeing his reaction, Vivian paused, confused. Was this Melphis in disguise? She noted that he seemed completely different from the Melphis she knew. The next minute, his demeanor shifted back. Smiling and raising the board for her to see, he remarked that she sure came quickly. Vivian smacked her forehead in disbelief, realizing it was actually him. He admitted that he was worried she might see through his disguise and ignore him, but she was still as clueless as ever, and that made him happy. She snatched the board and ripped it in fury, asking if he was mocking her. He quickly denied it. She tossed the board away, questioning how he managed to pull off such a perfect disguise every time. She had fallen for it and kidnapped him again. She wanted to take a closer look at him, so she stepped forward and grabbed his face. To her surprise, he didn't even have any makeup on. It was bizarre. Melphis smiled and teased her, saying she just wanted to touch his face and should be honest about it. He held her hands, and in response, Vivian pinched his face in anger, causing him to flinch and cry out in pain. Vivian smiled and told him he was asking for it. Melphis began preaching his feelings, saying he was drawn to strong women and that the more she did that to him, the more attractive she became. Vivian was fed up, calling him a hopeless pervert. The next moment, Ren burst into the room, announcing that something had happened. Vivian turned and asked if another man had shown up. Rin shook his head, explaining that the monitors were malfunctioning and suggesting she take a look herself. What? Vivian exclaimed, wondering why the monitors were malfunctioning all of a sudden. Ren, looking frustrated, admitted that he had examined them but couldn't figure out the cause. Vivian gasped, saying that if even he couldn't figure it out, then it must be a serious problem. She quickly moved to check on the monitors, telling Ren to kick Melphis out right now. Ren nodded. Vivian turned back one last time in anger, warning Melphis that if she caught him again, he would be dead. Then she dashed off. Melphis watched her leave, looking sad. Ren immediately ordered Melphis to leave, reminding him that he had heard Vivian. Melphis pointed out that Ren's entire demeanor changed the moment Vivian left, suggesting that if they asked him, he could be more helpful to her than a childish man like Ren. Ren clenched his teeth in rage. Shadows began to waft out from him, towering over Melphis. Ren loomed over him with a menacing aura, warning that if he didn't want to die there, he'd better get out. I knew it. I just knew there was something fishy about this Ren. The male lead has been right under your nose, Vivian. Melphis asked Ren why the monitors malfunctioned just when he and Vivian were having a moment, suggesting that Ren might have used a trick. Ren stepped forward, his aura icy, and glared at Melphis, accusing him of being the one using tricks. Ren demanded to know how Melphis had shown up, 
Given that no information about him could be found anywhere in the Empire, asking him where he had crawled out from. Melfus smirked and asked if Ren had hired an information guild to look into him. Turning back with a smile, Melfus told Ren not to be disappointed, as a petty guild like that would never find anything on him. Ren, angry, responded that if it weren't for Lady Vivian, Melfus would already be dead. Melfus replied that this was exactly why he had written a will address to Vivian in advance, saying that if he died, Ren probably had something to do with it. Ren grabbed Melfus by the shirt and cursed at him, but Melfus remained unbothered. He suggested that he thought Ren had feelings for Vivian, but perhaps it was him, Melfus, whom Ren was interested in all along. He told Ren he was sorry to disappoint, but he wasn't his type and suggested he give up. Ren, furious, declared that if Melfus wasn't going to reveal his identity, he had no reason to keep listening to him. He was visibly disgusted. Oh, by the way, Melfus added, asking if it was alright for Ren's beloved Master Vivian to see him being roughed up like this. Ren scoffed and smiled, explaining that unfortunately, the monitor had stopped working. Melfus smirked, calling Ren a sneaky devil, and asked if Vivian knew how two-faced he was. Ren dragged him by the collar and warned him not to say Lady Vivian's name. Oh! Melfus exclaimed just as Ren tossed him out. Before slamming the door, Ren glared down at Melfus and warned him to stay away or he would kill him the next time. Slam! Melfus stood up, dusted himself off, laughed, and complimented Ren on his temper. Suddenly, he snapped his fingers and changed back to his real face. Grinning, he wondered if he should disguise himself with red hair and golden eyes next time. Meanwhile, in the room, Vivian struggled with the monitors, asking what was wrong with them since they were perfectly fine earlier. She continuously whacked them, telling them to snap out of whatever was going on. She was at least thankful that the camera in Dietrich's room was working very well. Dietrich was busy admiring himself in the mirror, remarking, another day of being handsome. However, she couldn't see Melfus's room or the corridor in front of it at all. Frustrated, Vivian muttered that it was bad enough dealing with weirdos like Dietrich and Melfus, but now the cameras were broken too. She plopped to the ground, feeling drained, and wondered how she would fix them. It wasn't like she could call a repairman to her secret hideout. All she wanted was to catch the male lead, but it seemed so complicated. She never even had any time to rest. Vivian thought to herself that living as a serial kidnapper of handsome men meant no personal life at all. How do you like living as a kidnapper? She mused. She had lost her appetite, passed out, and even thrown up a few times. But it was all fine. Although Run was there to help her, she was slowly reaching her limits, both physically and mentally. Her eyes began to close, and she smacked her cheeks to keep herself awake. She exclaimed, Ugh! and asked God to take pity on her and send her the male lead if he was watching. Halo, you'll have to find him yourself, child, a voice said. Damn it, she cursed. Vivian turned, her eyes closing slowly, praying that Calix would come to her on his own. Creak. The door opened, and someone stepped inside, seeing her sleeping on the floor. He hovered above her, lifted her up, and softly called her name. It was Run. In another place, a subordinate mentioned that the client had arrived. The masked man asked if it was Lady Vivian, and if so, to send her in. When the masked man spoke, saying he owed her an apology for failing to find information on Calix again, he looked up and froze. Why the heck, he exclaimed, realizing it wasn't Vivian. Ren sat down in the chair, without uttering a word. The masked man told him to give a heads up if he was coming to her place next time. Ugh, the masked man exclaimed, knowing he would not get an answer. He noted that Rin was a completely different person when Lady Vivian wasn't around. The masked man slid off his mask and asked Rin why he had brought him there today, calling him Master. They stared at each other. The man never thought he would hand over his position as a master to a kid like Rin. Recalling when Rin had come in and frightened the man, asking if he was the master of Gerald's guild, after ending most people, Rin told him that he would be the master starting from that day. The man bowed and didn't dare to refute Ren's words. To this day, the man still shivered when recalling that time. Ren finally spoke, asking how much information on Calix the man had erased. 
The man cleared his throat and said that unless Calix exposed himself, no one would know who he was. In other words, he told Ren to be careful not to expose himself. Yep, my hunch is never wrong. Vivian, I just want to see the day you finally realize that your precious male, Lud has always been right beside you. Ren nodded and stood up, saying he would be on his way now. The man ended the conversation by explaining how Lady Vivian was desperate to find him, telling Ren not to hide himself for too long. Ren flinched, turned around, and glared at the man, saying that it was none of his business. He left. All the man could do was sigh, noting how uptight Rin was. Back in their hideout, Rin carried Vivian to the bed. With the help of his shadow, he softly laid her down, and the shadow placed the blanket over her. Boy, this is really creepy. A freaking shadow. He looked at her and felt drawn to touch her face. As he did, she tossed a bit, and Rin flinched, chastising himself for daring to touch Lady Vivian. He gritted his teeth and softly called her name, asking if she would still let him stay by her side if she knew what he was hiding or if she would push him away. Vivian just turned in her sleep, drooling and enjoying her rest. Seeing this, Ren smiled and left the room. The next day, Vivian went to her room and saw Dietrich there. She paused, her mind racing, knowing it had been a week since he was kidnapped. She asked him what he was doing since he seemed to have no plans of leaving. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. Oddly enough, it seemed he was lying on her bed. Yes, I am, he replied nonchalantly. With the same demeanor, she told him to get the hell out. You want me to get the hell out? He asked. Yes, she replied, pointing at the door. I actually want you to go home. He really needed to go home. Leave us alone, Dietrich. Leave us, cries in tiredness. She smiled forcefully, telling him that she was releasing him and he was free to go. But Dietrich simply ignored her and continued reading his book. Vivian cursed him inwardly. She spoke, reminding him that she thought he was a busy man and questioning if he didn't have work to do. He glanced at her. Work? Now that he thought about it, the meeting with the high-ranking noble was taking place today. He knew that if he didn't attend, things might get troublesome. He got up and Vivian felt a glimmer of hope. Did you remember something important? She asked. He smiled and replied, Actually, there is something important at hand. He reminded her of her promise to call him Dietrich. Vivian was totally dumbfounded. Dietrich gasped, his expression suddenly turning fierce as he exclaimed, Sorry? She did. Reflecting on it, he then remarked that seeing a handsome face too often could affect one's memory, suggesting that it must be his fault. Face bomb. Here I thought this Dumblehead finally wanted to be serious. Dietrich apologized to Vivian for causing a decline in her memory. Vivian stared at him, dumbfounded, and questioned what on earth he was talking about. Sighing, Dietrich turned away and said that it would be bad if her memory were to decline further. With that, he returned to his room. He left, and Vivian dropped to the ground, exhausted and thoroughly annoyed. Meanwhile, in the Emperor's office, knock. Knock. Come in, the emperor called. A man entered, bowing and greeting his highness. The emperor was angry, noting that Bilbidus was absent yet again and asking why he kept missing these meetings. He demanded that Dietrich's attendant be honest with him and hoped he had a good reason for missing another meeting. The attendant, sweating profusely and extremely nervous, finally spoke up, telling his highness that Lord Dietrich had been kidnapped. The emperor looked at the attendant angrily and asked if he was seriously telling him that a magic swordsman had been kidnapped. The attendant, aware of Lord Dietrich's tendency to wander the streets looking to get kidnapped, left that part out. He adopted a serious expression and explained that they had whisked Lord Dietrich away and that he was there when it happened, assuring his highness that he was telling the truth. Right, the emperor sighed, acknowledging that with a face like Dietrich's, there was nothing surprising about it. The attendant nodded sadly. My gosh, there truly is something wrong with everyone in this place. Ha ha ha. Very well, you may leave now, the emperor said. The attendant gave a final bow and left. Once outside the door, he wept nervously, wondering when on earth Lord Dietrich planned on returning. Meanwhile, her highness passed him, noticing his distress, and entered the emperor's room. She bowed, 
and made her presence known. The emperor immediately grabbed his cup and hurled it at her, causing it to break and spill tea on her head. I don't know about her, but if I was the one, he is receiving the kettle on his head immediately. The full package. His highness yelled, demanding to know how she could humiliate him like that. She sighed, recognizing his temper and feeling thankful that the tea was at least lukewarm. She bowed again, accustomed to his tantrums and apologized, promising to do her best to rectify the situation. He shouted, asking if she even knew what she was apologizing for, and informed her that Lord Dietrich Bilbetus had been captured by the kidnapper. She froze in fear. He continued, stating that if she had caught the kidnapper as she was supposed to, this wouldn't have happened. She gritted her teeth, thinking that if even the best swordsman in the empire could be kidnapped, it was no wonder she couldn't catch the kidnapper despite her efforts. Three months, he declared. That was all the time he was giving her. She bowed her head, knowing she wouldn't get another chance if she failed. She wondered how Dietrich Bilbetus could have been kidnapped. Even if he was captured and confined, someone as hot-headed as him could have easily destroyed the entire building and escaped. Then, as if realizing something, she spoke up. Your Majesty, I will hold a banquet at the palace, she announced. A banquet? For what? The Emperor asked. She explained that she suspected a noble might be behind all the kidnappings. She proposed inviting them and everyone close to them to the banquet so she could observe them all, convinced she would find useful clues for the case by doing so. Her Highness knew that pretending to be a victim was the easiest way to avoid suspicion. She had no doubt that Dietrich had been kidnapped on purpose, suspecting that a narcissist like him would jump at the chance of being kidnapped by a pervert who only targets handsome men. Moreover, there were talks of marriage between Dietrich and the Lady of House Schmidt, a family closely connected to the prince. So guys, there is more to discover in this mawa, but this is where this part of the story ends. Honestly, I can't stop giggling while reading this mawa. Also, what do you think about the story so far? If you love the story to continue, please comment the name Vivian and see you guys in the next one.